Okay, so today we have a three-part question covering refrigeration cycles for the mechanical FE exam. So we have basic questions here, but knowing how to do this will get you these easy points on the actual FE exam. So we're told we have a table provides steady state operating conditions, operating data for a vapor compression refrigeration cycle using R131A as the working fluid. For a refrigerant with a mass flow rate of 0 0.08 kilogram per second, so this is our mass flow rate, what we want to find is three things. We want to find the compressing power, the compressor power in kilowatt, what is that most nearly? We will find the cooling rate achieved by the evaporator in kilojoules per second and we will finally find the coefficient of performance. So we have three questions for this sample problem. And we're given this table. So we're given the table and we're told the state and the state that we're measuring here is the enthalpy. We're, we're given enthalpy values for state 1, state 2, and state 3. And note here you might be confused. You'll be like, okay, they're giving me one, two, three. What are they talking about? Ranking cycle, Carnot? Wh what is this cycle? So the hint here is they tell you it's a vapor compression refrigeration cycle. They actually tell you it's that cycle, right? So you would have to refer in the handbook to that cycle using this refrigerant and the following condition for this mass flow rate. So that's what we have here and if we quickly, real quick, just describe this cycle, basically we have the cycle and this is also given in the handbook, in the new FE handbook under cycles and thermodynamics for refrigeration cycle. Basically we have four states that we're going to go through. So what we're going to start with in this description is 4 to 1. So let's say we start at 4, go to 1. 4 to 1 and we know we have the evaporator what we have occurring here is a two-phase liquid vapor mixture so we're in the mixed state here at 4 right because we're inside the dome we have a vapor liquid mixture where we start and it's a refrigerant is evaporated through the heat transfer from the refrigerated space at constant pressure so what we're doing is we're gaining heat here Essentially, we're removing heat from the refrigerated space, right? From the space that we want to refrigerate, from the space that we want to be cold. Picture the space being here, and we remove heat. So that's what happens from 4 to 1, where we have the evaporator. That's where actually cooling happens, right? From 4 to 1, where we have the evaporator. And this uh, no occurs at constant pressure, 4 to 1. Then we have process 1 to 2, so we start at 1, go to 2, we have the compressor, right? So we have here, a, the vapor refrigerant is compressed to a rel relatively high temperature and pressure requiring work input at constant entropy. So the key thing here, we have constant entropy and we increase the temperature. We increase to a very high temperature. Notice how on the temperature y-axis, we go all the way up to 2. So we start at 1 and we go up to 2 and we supply some work. We have some work in. And note here, work in, this direction is going to be positive. It's the positive sign convention. So we supply work in to increase the temperature at constant entropy and we increase the pressure as well and we end at 2. Then we go from 2 to 3. So we, go, we start at 2, go to 3 and this is where we have the condenser. It says vapor refrigerant condenses to liquid. So we go from a vapor to a liquid through the heat transfer to the cooler surrounding at constant pressure. So what are we doing here is we release heat. So here the condenser serves the job of rejecting heat, right? So in this state from 2 to 3 in the condenser, we're rejecting the heat. And from 4 to 1, I didn't say this, we're absorbing here. Evaporator absorbs when we're having the condenser from 2 to 3, we reject the heat. And we know this is done to the cooler surroundings. So we're making this area hot, right? When we reject here, we're, we're causing the surrounding to be warmer. Then from 3 to 4, the last state is 
three to four we have the expansion expansion valve and the liquid refrigerant expands to the evaporator pressure by throttling in an expansion device so three to four we have the expansion device and we're saying that we have a throttling condition as well from three to four and note here that from three to four the most important thing i would look at is h4 will always equal to h3 so the enthalpy at four enthalpy is equal to the enthalpy at three right and one other note in the handbook they tell us also under your cycles in the new fe handbook p2 equals to p3 so the pressure at two is equal to the pressure at three that pressure does not change pressure at two equals to the pressure at three and one last other thing we know in the handbook they give us these equations these are handy so here we're looking at refrigeration so we're going to use this top one so the cop refrigerant is going to be h1 minus h4 and what would you say this is so it's going to be the cooling we know h1 minus h4 is actually the cooling effect or the cooling achieved it's looking at what's happening here from four to one right it's what's happening for the evaporator so let me define this as the cooling on top which is h1 minus h4 divided by what h2 minus h1 so where is that on the cycle the t versus s cycle the temperature versus entropy we know that h2 minus h1 is going to be where the compressor is the work right so it's by the work input so the bottom is actually work input and one other thing this is kind of extra it's not relevant to this question but i would notice for a heat pump it's like the opposite of the refrigerator and it operates on the same basis but what we're the goal of the heat pump is to what we want to have heating we want to apply heat we want to have heat and release heat to the warm environment for example a house or a medium whatever it may be so the top one is going to be h2 minus h3 and where is that it's going to be this two to three that's where the condenser is so we release heat so we're actually rejecting heat so we're gonna have heating effect here so the top one is actually the heating and the bottom does not change it's the work input and that's what the coefficient of performance is and that's given in the handbook as well under cycles so let's solve this question it's not that bad we're given the state one two three all the enthalpies for each state and one last thing is we know that for four for state four let's just finish it off here what's going to be the enthalpy we know the same as which one three right h4 is equal to h3 when you have an ideal refrigeration cycle so h4 is equal to h3 so for four it's not given but you would refer to the handbook and actually say that it's the same right so the compressor power in kilowatt is most nearly what so we're focused on the compressor the compressor is going to be this and we want to find the power the power we generate which is the work right so we will find that by simply looking at the enthalpy values and isolating that system isolating the compressor and applying the mass and energy balance so we're going to say that the power i'm going to call it w dot for the compressor we simply do the mass flow rate which is m dot and that's given and we do h2 minus h1 because we're looking at the again the compressor we take the final minus the initial the final state which is 2 minus the initial which is 1 so we will say the w dot compressor so m dot is going to be given and that's given in the problem statement 0 0.08 kilogram per second so we do 0 0.08 kilogram per second and you multiply by h2 minus h1 so h2 is going to be 280.15 and that's going to be in units of kilojoules per kilogram minus h1 which is 
0.35 kilojoules per kilogram close that then we have the kilogram units cancels right so these cancel they're across from each other and then we have kilojoules per second but we want kilowatt right so what we would do so let me do the math for this 0 0.08 times 280.15 minus 241.35 so you get 3.1 and that's actually the correct units right because we know we have that k that k is going to be the kilo and the joule per second will give us the watt right so that joule per second will give us the watt and then we can actually get the units of kilowatt or you can say one thing is we know that if you want to do it this way one kilo joule per second so let me write the joule per second is going to equal to what one kilowatt right because a joule per second is a watt and the k just we move it right so we get at the end units of kilowatt these would all cancel so we get kilowatt for the units and w dot c should be 3.1 kilowatt so that's the first answer and that should be c and then we have the cooling rate achieved by the evaporator is most nearly so note here they say cooling rate right so we're focused on the cooling rate for the evaporator so the evaporator is when it's four to one right from four to one the two-phase liquid mixture of refrigerant and this is a constant pressure so here we're absorbing heat in the evaporator and that's going to be the cooling the cooling effect or at times they call it the refrigeration capacity anyway so you just do state the final state which is h1 minus h4 right and we essentially for that one the cooling rate let's call it q actually i'm gonna call it q dot and you would do h1 minus h4 q dot and we have to have kilojoules per second right at the end oh i forgot to multiply sorry you would need to multiply that by the mass flow rate h1 minus h4 and then you do q dot so the mass flow rate does not change it's the same all these so h1 we know is given to be 241.35 35 kilojoules per kilogram it's the enthalpy value h4 is given to be 91.49 kilojoules per kilogram so the kilograms cancel and we get kilojoules right per second so that's the rate the cooling rate achieved in the evaporator and i believe q dot when i did this i got around 11.988 kilojoules per second so that's the answer for this one that's b and the last one is the cop the coefficient of performance is most nearly what so we know it's the coefficient of performance of the refrigerant right of the refrigeration cycle when we have the refrigeration cycle so we will use this equation h1 minus h4 divided by h2 minus h1 which is the input work input so for that we will say the cop for the refrigerant we do the 241.35 minus 91.49 and both of these have units of kilojoules per kilogram it's just the enthalpy and that's going to be h1 minus what h4 then on the bottom we have the work input which is h2 minus h1 so h2 is going to be 280 
0.15 minus the H1, which is going to be 241.35, right? 241.35 kilojoules per kilogram. So then we can find the COP, the refrigerant, and for that we get 3.86. So that's going to be the coefficient of performance. So for that it should be A. And I think that's all for this. Let me know if you have questions. Thank you.